So in this video, we're going to talk about pointer arithmetic. Pointer arith arithmetic is how we manipulate the values of a pointer, and it allows us to move around in memory very efficiently. So I'm going to set up an array. I'm going to call that array X. I'm going to have five elements. And I'll fill it each index with what its actual index is. So the so array index 2 will be value 2. Actually, just to help us differentiate this, I'll double those numbers up so that we have... That way we won't get confused between value 4 and index 4. I'm going to create an integer pointer. And I'm going to set that pointer equal to the address of array index 0. So it's pointing to the start of that array. So I'm going to do this a lot, where I print out all these values. So first in a for loop, and we're going to print f x of i i is equal to some value, and we'll say that address percent p. We'll also print what its size is. They should all be the same, so that won't be super interesting, but you'll see why that comes into play in a moment. So we're going to print ii, x of ii, the address of x of ii, and again, we did this with integers before, but all this is is an integer, right? This is a certain index in the array. So hopefully that's not too confusing. And I'm just going to put size event because that's what it's pointing to. Then I'm going to print P. And uh, let's try to make this line up. Okay, so that'll be lined up, and then let's print this in a 16-character wide, wide field. I think that should be big enough. That way, everything will be lined up nicely. So here we have P. The address of p and the size of p. Oh, and let's also do what pre is pointing to. And I think that should be it. Looks like we're missing a, or we have an extra parentheses here that we don't need. So that should give us what we want. We're going to copy and paste this code a lot, so I want to get it right the first time, and then we shouldn't have to take so much time later on. So we have a lot of warnings. Let's see. So in line 9, we're missing a void. That's right here. Or a void pointer, I should say. And it looks like we're missing size of here. Let's try that again. Spacing is off there by a little bit. Looks like I'm one have one space too many. Okay, so there's a good output that we can talk about. You can see that each of these locations in the array has size 4, which makes sense because it's an integer. You can see their values. You can see the address. And then the address that P is holding is the address of x0 right here. And notice that it's 0 if we dereference. Let's cause some mischief, and let's modify P. 
or let's modify, I should say, x0 using p. So here we're going to say, we're going to dereference p, we're going to set that equal to 100. And then once we do that, let's print everything again. This is the exact same stuff I had before, except that I'll change that initial values to the thing that we did, but the code is all the same. And I better save it before I compile. So let's run this now. Notice x0 is 100, but nothing else changed, right? So p is still pointing to the same location x1 was before, but we've changed that value through the pointer. So let's do some pointer arithmetic. So if we say p++, we're incrementing p. Okay, We're not changing any values. So let's just print everything as is, and we'll print that we're incrementing p here. I'll take away that colon just so it doesn't get confusing. So now when we run, something happened to our output. Ah, I didn't put a new line here. Let's put that new line so that the output's a little cleaner. So now, right, same thing as before, p after we set, we dereference p and set it to 100, we've changed the value of x0. But notice, after we increment p, it was 9b0, now it's 9b4. So we incremented it, we added 1. But 9b4 minus 9b0 was 4. And the reason is we incremented to the next integer location. Integers have size four, so we added four to the address stored at p. Now, if we dereference p, it's equal to 11, meaning p is now pointing to x1. So now let's take this and do it again. So let's change it to something else. Since uh, P is pointing to 1, let's change this to 1,111. We'll print everything out. Now notice we've changed X1 because that's what we're pointing to. So now let's, mod let's do some modifications to P again. But instead of adding 1, let's add 2. Okay, so we're adding 2 to p. Let's compile. So here, we've added 2 to p. So we've gone from e34. And notice these addresses change each time we run the code. And that's to be expected. That's fine. We're, we're not guaranteed what the address will be. But the changes that happen as we run each time are consistent through that execution. So don't be alarmed that those numbers change. Now here we have E34, here we have E3C. C is 12. So E3C minus E34 is eight. 12 minus four is eight. Again, we only added two, but we didn't add the number two, we added two integer locations. Integers have size four, so we added two times four, which is eight to our address. And now notice P, if we look at what we're dereferencing, we're getting 33. We're getting array index three now, X3. So we did have X1. So we started at X0. We incremented it, we got to X1. And then when we added two, we got to X3. So you can sort of see there's a correlation between this pointer arithmetic and array indexing. And that's not by accident. So now let's do something interesting. I'm going to take 
when we incremented p, but I'm going to change this syntax just a little bit. And I'm going to dereference p and increment that. Okay, so if I'm incrementing p, I'm dereferencing p and incrementing it. So think about what that's going to do. So notice, this doesn't change p. It changes the variable that p is alias to. Because we dereference it first, that gives us an alias of x3, and then we increment x3, so it moves from 33 to 34. And again, I use parentheses here. They're not required, but I don't want to have to think about what has precedence dereferencing or incrementing. And I don't want whoever's looking at this code to have to think of that. So I'm always going to use parentheses to clarify what I intend so that I'm not thinking about what operation is going to wind up having precedence here and, and all that. Don't think about it. Just put parentheses around it the way you want. I can also decrement P. And notice I'm not changing the, the printout code at all. So if I decrement P, again, I'm not dereferencing it, so I'm actually decrementing the pointer. I go from 7C to 7, 8. Again, C, mi C minus 8 is 4. We're, we're subtracting 4. And now notice that P is pointing to index 3. It was of index 2. It was pointing to index 3. We decremented. Now it's pointing to index 2. It subtracted 4 so that it was able to point to one integer before where it was originally pointing. So finally, let's try this. So here, what is this going to do? And again, parentheses are your friends here. So I'm decrementing P. Okay, that's the first thing that's going on here. So wherever I was pointing before, I should be one array index before that. Then I'm going to dereference it, and I'm going to increment it. So I'm going to be pointing to that previous location, and then I'm going to increment the value that's there. And notice this is outside parentheses. That gets done last. I don't have to think about when all of this stuff happens. So... I should probably save my file if I want to run the new code. We see that now P is index FE4, which is index 1. So previously it was index 2. We subtract it. We decremented it. So now it's pointing to 1. And then we dereferenced it and incremented that location. So here we have 1112. So we've modified that value, and you can see that's what P is pointing to. Now, things like this are probably a little ridiculous to do. I know sometimes C programmers have a habit of trying to put as much code in as few characters as possible. And while that's a good skill to develop to be able to understand code, doing something like this all in one line is a little ridiculous. And certainly trying to do it with trusting the order of operations and, and utilizing those where, where you can. It, it makes your code too complicated. So understand how to do this pointer arithmetic, but typically you just want to do one change per line. It just makes your code easier to read and you don't have to spend a lot of brain cycles trying to figure out what you were trying to do originally. So this is pointer arithmetic. Definitely make sure you understand what's going on here. We could do this example if we wanted to, we could do this example with variables instead of an array. And in fact, if you look at the get history here, you can see that I used to do it that way. But one thing I don't like about that is, is doing that is depending too much on how the variables get allocated in memory. If I use arrays, I'm guaranteed to get a nice contiguous piece of memory and we can move through that array at will.
this is pointer arithmetic. It's a really important topic. So definitely make sure you spend some time understanding what's going on here.